Hello, I'm Jan, the lead developer of the Mycelium wallet for Android, this thing. Um, I would like to talk about cold storage today. So everybody basically agrees that you should have your coins in cold storage. Uh, it's basically the only secure way to store your, your funds. Um, and so how are you going to do that? Well, so people they typically say that, well, you produce a paper wallet. Uh, a paper wallet is a thing that contains uh, a private key and probably also a Bitcoin address uh, and it's totally offline. You know, you cannot get to it from the internet or a computer or something. So, but how are you going to create one of those? Well, if you go to the Bitcoin forums uh, and ask around, people typically say that, you know, go to some website uh, that allows you to create paper wallets, download some HTML into your web browser um, have it generate uh, some some paper wallets, typically uh, you know Bitcoin addresses, private keys, QR codes, and stuff, um, and then print them out. Well, this method is so full of fail. Uh, so you basically download some random program from the internet, run it in your web browser, uh, which uh, you know your computer could have a virus and such, uh, and then you send it probably over the Wi-Fi to your to your printer uh, and then print it out. There are so many attack vectors, um, and you know recently uh, one of our hardware developers came up with this great idea. Basically, you know, you create a USB device. It looks like this, and it contains a hardware-based uh, entropy source so that it can create random numbers. And let me just go ahead and demonstrate how it works. So I take this device, and here's my my printer. I insert it into the USB port. So this requires a printer that has um, a USB you know, port where you can insert um, basically a flash drive. Um, and now the device powers up. And this causes it to, um, to generate um, a totally random number, uh, turn it into a uh, Bitcoin address, uh, of course a private key and a Bitcoin address, and put it into two QR codes in a JPEG. So basically, the JPEG now is seen by the printer and the printer thinks that, well, I'm going to print a picture. So, um, and actually what it shows me right up here in the display, you probably can't see that, is my paper wallet. So I click print and say, okay. And now it goes ahead and prints. So basically the private key is generated by this device turned into a private key and a, QR, uh, and a Bitcoin address. These turned into QR codes and put into a JPEG picture. The printer sees it and offers to print it. So there's no internet connectivity here. There's no computer with a virus. There's only this device and this printer. So if you can trust the device and your printer is not one of those fancy ones that allows you to, you know, cache stuff and upload it to the internet and whatnot, then this is a very, very much more secure way than what you would normally do. So the output looks like this. It's a totally fresh um, Bitcoin wallet, uh, which has one private key and one Bitcoin address. And I can actually go ahead now and send money to it. So to do that, I would take my, my Bitcoin wallet. I typically use my Cilium because that's the one I made. Um, and then I can send money to this address. Oh, sorry, this one, the Bitcoin address. And uh, whenever I want to spend some money that I have stored here, I can scan the private key and spend it. So for that purpose, um, the Marcelium Bitcoin wallet has a cold storage spending feature where you can swipe uh, your paper wallet and send it somewhere else. So this basically means that your funds are offline until the, the point in time where you're willing to go ahead and spend it. So the uh, device can also do something else uh, because, so this is a, yeah, a basic paper wallet um, and this is very great. But the problem here is that of course, if somebody steals this, you kind of lost your money. So instead you can eject the device. And by the way, that deletes uh, the private key from the device. There's nothing on there anymore. When I insert it again, I can then click this button and then it generates a different output. So instead of creating um, a private key with um, yeah, basically a single private key, it takes the private key and splits it into shares. 
Okay, so now it's done generating uh, the key. My printer should recognize it. There you go. So now it shows me, um, come on. There you go. It shows me now a different output. You probably can't see it there, so I'll just go ahead and print it. So instead, this output contains a single private key split into shares. Uh, and this is done in such a way that, um, so basically it's, it's, it splits it into three shares and it's done in such a way that any two shares can combine the private key. So um, it's, it's a process called Shamir Secret Sharing. You, you can look it up on the internet. It was invented in the 70s by a guy calling himself Shamir. Um, so the great thing about this is that instead of having one piece uh, and you know if somebody steals it I've lost my money I now have three shares and any two of them combines the private key. So this means that if you know I put one under the bed, uh, one in the bank and one at my mom's place then if somebody steals one of those shares they have nothing and I can still get to my private key. Or let's say that you know my house is flooded and my paper wallet is gone. I can still go to my you know my mom's place and to the bank, get those two shares and combine the private key. So <clears throat> the output looks like this. Uh, so as you see here, it says you know private key share one of three, two or three, three or three, and then also uh, the Bitcoin address on the side here. Um, so basically, what I would do now is cut this into three pieces. Uh, probably laminate them. I did it already. Uh, so here's here's a laminated uh, sample. Uh, of course, this is a different private key because a new one is generated every time I do this. Um, you know, and laminating it is a good idea. It makes makes it more durable and, and things like that. Um, and basically put them in different places. Whenever I want to spend from this, I then have to collect two shares, scan them. Uh, with, uh, and I can do that with my Mycelium wallet, scan it, bam, bam, and I can spend. That's it. So this is super, super uh, secure and a very, very easy way to create paper wallets. You basically get one of those, insert it into a printer and click print, and you have a paper wallet. It has never been easier or more secure to create paper wallets. Thank you.